Hey Algebra 2, well today we're moving on to our next chapter, chapter 7, and this chapter is dealing with rational expressions. Well the first lesson has to do with the rational expressions and functions. Um, first of all, a rational expression is when the numerator and the denominator are both polynomials. So an example of that would be 3x plus 2 over 12x plus 7. Notice both the numerator and the denominator are both polynomials. So an example of something that wouldn't be um, a rational expression would be something like 3x plus 2 over the square root of x. Because this technically is not a polynomial. The square root of x is not a polynomial. So therefore, this um, is not a rational expression. Okay? All right, well, how do we solve these? The first thing you're going to see is going to ask for the domain. What is the domain? Okay. Well, first of all, a domain we know it to be as all x values. Okay, all possible x values. So if I have a problem such as 2x minus 3 over x squared minus 8x plus 12. Now, if we're trying to figure out all x values, okay, for our domain, you can list all the x values it could be, or another way of expressing the domain is listing what it can't be. Because in this case, there's an infinite number of x's it can be. The question is, is there anything it can't be? So when you're looking for domain um, on this section, what you're going to do is you set your denominator uh, not equal to zero. Forget about the numerator. Numerator doesn't even matter when you're trying to find domain. Just look for your denominator, and what you're going to do is you're going to set this not equal to zero, okay? Because again, you can tell me all the x values that it could be, or you can just tell me what it can't be. And that's another way of stating your domain. So we take the denominator and set it not equal to zero, okay? We're going to factor this into two parentheses. And we've learned again that uh, if it's, this is a plus, that means same symbol inside the parentheses. Therefore, we know that it's minus minus. Factors of 12 that add up to 8 would be 6 and 2. So our domain on this problem we can say is x can be anything except x cannot be positive 6, x cannot be positive 2. Because when x is 6 or 2, it makes the denominator equal to 0, which makes the whole problem undefined. Because you can't have 0 as your denominator. And these are the two numbers that would make it zero. So therefore, your domain, again, is an infinite amount of numbers. Or we can just say it just is not six or two. Any other x value you plug in will work and give you a number where your denominator is not zero. But in this case, six and two will not work. Okay? So this is how you find domain. Now, it's also going to ask for your zeros. Okay? your zeros. The way you do that is you set your numerator, so we're going to use the same problem, you're going to set your numerator equal to zero. So what this is saying is what do you plug in uh, to this problem to set it equal to zero, so to, to make your y value equal to zero, if I were to say y equals that. So this what when you're looking for zeros you set your numerator equal to zero. Okay, so we add three you have 2x is equal to 3, divide by 2, x is equal to 3 halves. So that there goes your zeros. That's saying 3 halves is the only number you can plug into x to make the whole problem equal to 0. Because if your numerator is equal to 0, which is okay, it sets the whole problem equal to 0. So, again, set your numerator, numerator, equal to 0. And that is how you find the zeros. Domain, set your denominator not equal to zero. Zeros, set your numerator equal to zero. Okay? So that's how we find domain and zeros. And now what we're going to do is we're going to just do some simplifying. So if I were to ask you to simplify the rational expression, if I were to give you 2x over 6x to the fourth, minus 18x to the third. I want to simplify this. Now, what we're going to do on this problem is see, is there anything we can factor out top? Is there anything we can factor out bottom? 
Now up top all we have is 2x, so there's nothing really to factor out. So we're just going to rewrite the 2x on top. But on bottom, we notice that we, we can actually factor out a 6, and we can factor out an x to the third. They both have x to the third. If we do that, we're left here with just x minus, if we factored out a 6 here, we're left with 3. And we took the x to the third out, so that's gone. Once we've factored out, now we see, is there anything we can reduce top and bottom? Okay, so now the 2 over 6, that becomes a 1, the 6 becomes a 3. I have one exponent of x on top, 3 on bottom. So I can get rid of this x, and this exponent becomes a 2. So we're left with just a 1 on top, divided by 3x squared over x minus 3. And there's nothing more that we could factor out, so therefore this would be our final answer. Again, first step, see what you can factor out top, see what you can factor out bottom. After you've done that, we see what we can reduce on the outside of those parentheses. Let's do another one here. If I were to give you y squared minus y minus 42 over 14 plus 5y minus y squared. Well, first of all, we see that we have y squared up front on top. And we have a negative y squared. Um, so let's, let's change the order of the bottom so it looks the same as the top. But remember, you always change it. You always move the symbol with it. So this is a negative y squared plus 5y plus 14. Now we have the y squared, y to the first, no y. But before we factor, we always want this y squared to be positive. So what we can do is factor out a negative on the bottom. So we're just going to keep rewriting the top here. And again, we're not solving for anything, we're just simplifying. So if I factor out a negative, I'm left with y squared minus 5y minus 14. Again, I factor out a negative, so I change all the symbols. Negative doesn't go away, I just factor it out up front. Now what I can do is I ask myself, can I factor the top? Can we factor the top? We can factor that into two parentheses. So we know we have opposite symbols because that's a minus. Factors of 42 that are one away from each other is 7 and 6. 7 goes with the minus, 6 with the plus. We've done factoring. Now we have the negative out front, but now we can break this into two parentheses. So we're going to break that into two parentheses. We see a minus here, so therefore we know it's, again, opposite symbols. And the factors of 14 that are 5 away from each other are 7 and 2. So we've done all the factoring that we can. Now, if you have the same exact parentheses, top and bottom, we can actually cancel those out, treat that as one whole term. So we're left with, I'm going to bring the negative out front here, y plus 6 over y plus 2. It's very careful, very, very, be very, very careful. You cannot reduce the 6 and 2 because of these plus signs right here. And you can't do reduce the y's because of the plus signs. Okay? Because technically, if you think about it, I can just go ahead and put parentheses around. Notice, it's different parentheses. So therefore, you can't reduce any more. So you just have to leave it negative y plus 6 over y plus 2. So this would be your final answer right here. Okay? Again, don't reduce the 6 and 2 because of that plus sign. All right? Now let's do um, one more problem here. If I were to give you, now this is a bit of a tougher problem. So if I say t to the third minus t squared minus 4t plus 4 over t squared plus t minus 2. Now we have four terms. Now we've done one of these in class before. We have four terms. The way you handle factoring with four terms is we call factor by grouping. We're going to factor these first two. Is there anything that these two have in common? And we can actually factor out a t squared. And when we do that, we're left with t minus 1. Okay, if we factor a t squared out of the first two. Now what we're going to do is factor out of the second two. And what we can factor out of the second two is a negative 4. And if we take a negative 4 out of here, we have t, 4 divided by negative 4 is negative 1. Okay? 
we have t squared plus t minus 2 on bottom. But now, again, the reason why we factor by grouping is now we're going to end up with the same parentheses up top. So we can actually fa uh, factor out the t minus 1 and bring that up front. So we're going to bring our parentheses up front, the same parentheses that we have, leaving us with, again, if I were to cover up the t minus 1s, we're left with t squared minus 4. over t squared plus t minus 2. Now the question is, now we're done with factoring by grouping, can we break this parentheses down, the t squared minus 4? And we've learned this already, that we can actually break that, break that down into t plus 2 times t minus 2. Now on bottom here, we have t squared t to the first, no t. We actually can break that into two parentheses as well. So we have t and a t. Since that's minus, we know it's opposite symbols. And lastly, factors of 2 have a difference of 1 and would be 2 and 1. Now we look for any parentheses that we have in common, top and bottom, so we can cancel out. So I see t plus 2, t plus 2, t minus 1 on top, t minus 1 on bottom. So all we're left with as our final answer after we simplified is just t minus 2. This is our final answer. Okay, so this is how we factor uh, rational expressions. I know it can uh, be quite a few steps, uh, but um, good luck to that. I know you guys can do it. All right, good luck.